Hey everybody, so I just wanted to quickly talk about people and brand loyalty. Or, I think it's worth talking about. Um, I truly believe that, and I'll prove it, <laughs> that any piece of equipment that is out there right now, if it's, if it's appropriately priced, uh, these companies, the main ones, have gotten there for a reason. So that's a Shandaya on top, it's a steel on the bottom. I just bought that, it's an FS70R. And I'll tell you the truth, when I first got it, it wasn't running great. In fact, it died out on me after, say, half an hour of use. Brought it back to the dealership, bing, bang, boom, adjusted it for me, and now it's running better. Than the Shindai, it, it cuts and does a better job than, than the Shindai in that it's it's lighter and it's easier to control and to to just move around and it, it does a great job. So, what would my brand loyalty to a Shindaiwa have proven here? Um, maybe nothing. I, I don't think they have a comparable uh, trimmer. I'm pretty sure this is one of the. the Powerful or the smallest trimmers that they have already, shouldn't have. Um, and it was just heavy. I mean, it could be because it's common with multi tool system. But steel is great. But so is Shindai. I mean, let's be honest here. These are both both great trimmers, and that's my point. Is I could have gone all steel. <clears throat> excuse me or all Shandaiwa and I, I don't see the point in that. I wanted a smaller trimmer and so I chose the right brand that had the smaller trimmer. This is, they call it entry level. Hey, I, I went and knocked down some ditch right outside of the dealership. Ditch brush, it's like two, three feet tall and I kicked its butt. Um, I'm not sure the Shindaiwa would have done that good of a job or that quickly. So like, you know, there's a place, a time and a place and this deal is doing great and I still love the Shindaiwa. Um, and then look at this, this is an Echo. It's, again, it's a great, great little machine. It, fantastic blower, it always starts takes a little bit to warm up, but I think all blowers take a little bit to warm up. Um, and then what's this? A Toro! Again, uh, it, I could have gone Troy built, I could have gone Lawn Boy, I could have gone all kinds of different makes and models, but I chose Tor Toro, and it's not even a commercial, it's just high-end residential. And then, I mean, what's that? I mean, it's covered up, and I've actually sold this now. Gotten the money or delivered it, obviously, but that's John Deere. And so that's right now for where I am in my business. For residential, that's what I like in my tractors. I trust John Deere. It cuts cor correctly for the grass in my area. Uh, Nine out of ten people own a John Deere if they own a tractor around here. That's not nothing. And there you go. You know, what brand loyalty? I don't have any brand loyalty. Um, either your piece of equipment works or it doesn't. And nine times out of ten, it's going to be chopped up to... That's that one in one hundred. That's just a lemon. That happens. Uh, look at my steel. They gave it to me not too improperly. It was kind of acting like a lemon. Oh, the door swung open so now we can hear this. Air conditioner. But anyways, so yeah, that was just my little talk about brand loyalty. And again, like, they tell you you should use, like, um, certain brand, like John Deere brand oil, let me break, 
Quaker State. That's the kind of oil, this type of oil that I need for my tractor. Why would I, like, you trying to tell me that John Deere somehow makes oil better than Quaker State does? And that it's somehow engineered perfectly for the tractor? That I believe. Sure, it might be engineered perfectly for that motor. You know what? I'm pretty sure this is probably better and engineered for all motors that you put it in and it's just better. So there you go. Um, yeah. That's my little talk about brand loyalty. Um, yeah. Probably have a Black & Decker trimmer. Yeah. Weird. Here in just a second. Here we go. Let me see. Oh, here we go. So a weird week. Um, first time I cut one of my new customers was last week. And right off the bat, I could just tell something was going to be off when I was doing a property, do like I always do. And this is plain and simple. Uh, quality. You do the best work you can. Uh, you do excellent work. You manicure the yard. And you do the best that you possibly can every week. Every day. And that should keep the business coming in that sort of one. Um, keep things steady. Well, this customer. Uh, Long story short, nothing was good enough for her. Um, she says I didn't do a good job. So I said, oh, and that was that was this week. She says I didn't do a good lo job last week. And that was, that was after talking to her a dozen times during that cut, because she kept on coming out, telling me how to, how to cut. Like, apparently I don't know what I'm doing. And I was kind of starting to doubt myself, and then she said she spent two hours cleaning up the clippings, or the trimmings, from when I weed whacked along the fence line. And I was like, you spent, you, t you picked up the, the trimmings, like by hand, from my weed whacker along the fence. And I know how much there is. There wasn't that much, because most of it kept blowing out and cut with the lawnmower. But this, I can't even. I don't want to be rude, but man, you're crazy. You're on your hands and knees picking up the clippings from my weed whacker all along your fence. And no wonder you're pissed off at me. It makes it seem like I did nothing. Compared to what you did, you're correct. I did do nothing. And I'm telling you, you don't need, you don't need my service. And so I fired her. Uh, I said, this isn't gonna work out. Why? Why would I put myself through that? That doesn't make any sense. I do good work. Um, I might have left a little bit of grass uh, in her front garden by mistake, because I had been there for an hour and like 45 minutes at this point. And I'd already double cut the front yard because it wasn't short enough for her. Okay, so I recut and then I used the push mower instead of the instead of the tractor in the front yard. Fine, whatever. It's your yard and I was accept that's acceptable. When you want to cut short, fine, that's acceptable. But when she told me that this week, the first thing she says was I was expecting you at 12. It's quarter to 11, so I got there a little early because apparently I'm on a schedule that she expects me to follow. She wanted to know what time I'd be there. Approximately, I said, oh, maybe about 12 or so. That should be about right. And because I recently lost another, uh, well, never had that customer even. That customer I, I had in the States, um, I never even cut them once. And they couldn't convince her to, to not get a cut, her to get a cut. And so, um, 
And so I lost that customer, but whatever. I'm not gonna beat myself up. I did nothing wrong, that's business. Um, but this lady, man. Just the worst. And so I have uh, no problems getting rid of her. Um, you know, it's a too hard yard already, 15 things to, to trim around. And then she wants me to cut it her way, not, and that's fine, again, that's fine. But when you're gonna be rude to me and say, you did a bad, like, you did a terrible job. Like, you didn't do a good job. What are you, what? That's, that's my business model. That's, it's, it's, everything revolves around me doing a good job. I looked over your yard twice, or three times even. I missed a little bit of grass in one garden because I had to recut the entire front yard. And put grass in there after I'd blown it out already. Just ridiculous. Just. So yeah, when she said two hours crawling around and around the fence, picking up my clippings from my trimmer, I was just like, whoa. This isn't gonna work out for anybody. Um, good luck to whoever picks her up. Good luck. That's. I'm sure she's a nice lady, but she needs a gardener. She doesn't need a lawn care person. Uh, she needs a gardener who can. She she can nitpick for two hours a week, and that's. I don't have the time for that. What should I bring? A broom and a and a dustpan to sweep up my clippings. From, from my trimmer, like, and again, there was nothing there. Like, I saw the yard, it was fine. She told me, she told me when I left that it was too long. When I showed up this week, so seven days later, it wasn't long still. It wasn't too long. It was a nice, decent length. So I was like, <sighs> and again, you want your hair a certain way, that's fine. I'll do it a certain way. You're gonna be rude about it? Yeah, you're not worth it. You're not paying me $60 an hour here. You Forget it, forget it. It's not happening. So, see you later. Better short. And, but anyways, that's it for this week. Uh, I haven't been filming anything because my days are a little bit busy. And so, because I want to make sure I'm back in time. Back in time to I got my son from school. Um, I forego recording just to make sure I'm getting all my yards done. Um, I did pick up another new yard out in the country next to my parents' house, right next door. So that's that's these. Um, I got the lawn the lawn striper lawn groomer kit um, from John Deere. It's the um, not the aftermarket one, it's, it's the attachment straight from John Deere. It's, it's okay, it's a brush thing, it's not like a roller. Um, it, it does an okay job at three inches. Um, I leveled my deck. You can't really see my deck level up right there. I leveled my deck and uh, made sure it was at, you know, three inches was actually three inches. So I'm cutting it at three right now, and I'm just, eh. I feel like I want to go three and a quarter. Get a proper stripe. But the yards are looking just like the length is looking just right. It's got some length to it. But it's still short enough that people are happy because people around here, they like their short grass. They seem to think that grass should be controlled instead of nurtured. I do what I can. Uh, people, people are people. And when you when you learn how to take care of a yard a certain way, that's the right way to do it. Why would you do it any other way? But um, I mean, the truth is, you gotta nurture your grass if you want it to look healthy and to look awesome, to look like turf. You don't want it to turn brown come August. Um, you want it to stay green so that. Uh, you're the green grass in the neighborhood. Just some food for thought. Especially in Manitoba, I don't think people t 
down south realize it, but in Manitoba, in Canada, Winnipeg, we get some serious temperatures here throughout the summer. And uh, it's no joke. Uh, <laughs> it, gets, it gets really, really hot. You know, uh, today it was 30. 30 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's really warm. Um, and it gets up to 35. Uh, on the worst days, obviously. It doesn't get too much worse than that. It has to be an anomaly to go above 35. And with the human X, though, it's, you can get up there. Uh, I'm just talking about base temperature with the human X. You can get really hot. Uh, you know, Canada, especially Manitoba, pretty warm. It's a lot warmer than you would think. But hopefully, uh, I can do some more filming soon, guys. I'm gonna hopefully buy a camera. Um, if I feel like spending the money on it. Money has the business has money, so it can afford to buy a camera. But. Uh, my instincts are saying, wait, a couple months maybe, or a month, and uh, let things build up a little bit before I go spending money on things like a camera, when I already have a camera in my phone that's not decent, so, so yeah, that's it, thanks for watching guys, uh, we'll see you back next time, talk to you later, bye.